homestead. As promised, today we're going to talk about our quails. We've got these quails in August of last summer, and then now they've just been laying, 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 and we've decided that we we're going to incub incubate some eggs. We sold a, a few a few dozens to neighbors here and there, but now we're, we're going to start getting more serious into this and doing more behind the camera is my son Anthony and he's helping me with all this the incubator we we have is a, a little giant we and right now I've got to I think it's 20 22 eggs in there there should be hatching on the January 15th and we will make a video and keep you posted maybe by Sunday or Monday, we'll uh, candle some and go through that with you guys also. We've got these egg cartons that my wife got online, and then, then that's what we put them in. It hold, holds a dozen. And we, like I said, we've sold a, a couple of dozens. These birds have been very good. That's the reason why I want to keep going. They've been laying. We're right now here just in, in January. It's winter. It's cold outside, and they're still laying a egg a day. I went out there this morning. I'll show you once we go out. I'll show you the setup. But now I'm noticing that I've got uh, over breeding problems. So I got to separate, get some, some roosters out of there. But we'll go that together. Also, if you want to know if your eggs are, are fertile, you, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I don't have the best camera, but I'll show you. I've got a cracked egg here. I don't know if you can see there. There's like a little white dot right in the middle of the egg yolk that means your egg is fertile and it's they usually they say if it's fertilized there should be a little ring around it but i can't really see, really see nothing so just wanted to show you that so we'll stop this for, for right here for now we're going to get dressed we're going to go outside and i'll show you the setup at the same time we'll show you the property what we want we want to turn into uh, a homestead you will see that we have a challenge this is not very big but uh, we're confident we can do it stay with us all right welcome back you know we're outside we're going to talk about the quails in our property as you just saw Denny this did a quick view we'll show it again it's not very big but we want to <coughs> change it into a a, a, a little working on my, my dream was to one day, me and my wife maybe go out in up north and buy a bunch of acreage and live off grid in a cabin. But recently, I've had some some health issues, and I don't know how long I'll be able to to, to do this. That's why my son will eventually take take over, and I want to show him everything that I know. I'm not a professional at this. I am just like I said, just starting. It. Uh, I, I'm going to be learning as I go. So if you guys have any suggestions, please let me know and I'll be more than happy to, to, to read them. The scoop here we built from old pallet wood and some old fence boards that my son had brought from, from work. We built it all and then we made the roof. We put some tarps as much as we can to do to Make sure they're there warm. There, we'll show you also inside there. I got another way to keep, to keep them warm. We are in Canada. It is cold. Today's not too bad. Probably minus 8, minus 9 Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. But it's today's not too, too bad. These birds are hardy. They are doing good through the winter. I've heard that a lot of people say that usually they'll stop laying in the wintertime. But... These birds haven't stopped. I have four hands in there, two two roos, and they're still giving me an egg a day. Now the problem I'm having is I have too many roosters in there. I will today, me and Anthony will have to separate them because I have had some hands in there. I'll show you that are being overbred, and I'll show you what what I mean by that. I'll take one out and show you what it is. Let's walk over and see inside. This is a tarp that we have that at night. What I do is I cover up the front here. So just so they, they gives them a little bit more heat inside too, and it keeps them from the, the snow blowing in and the rain blowing in and stuff like that. During the day, it's always open. 
Another issue we're having, just like a lot of YouTuber friends have out there, is with the water. Of course, I, I'm off work because of my health issues, so I, it's it's easy for me. I come out and change the water every... I've been doing it about three or four times a day. I know some people say you can do it in the morning at night, but I like them to have fresh water all, all the time. We open this. As you can see, that's Molly, our, our mascot. She's a coon hound. She really, really loves the quail a little bit too much. I don't know if you can see it now. There we go. That's one of them. Like I said, I come and change the water about three, four times a day. We had it open at one time. There's a board here that's closed that they can go through the top and to the bottom. But the problem I was having is a couple of them would go down, but for some reason couldn't find their way back up so because like i said we are in canada it is cold i'm i'm worried about them being cold so i'm just close them up i don't have a lot of birds right now i only have six so i'm hope, working on getting more we we got 22 eggs in the incubator that i've showed you before and i'm hoping we get a good hatch rate out of them and then in the summertime i'll show you where we want to expand. We want to make it bigger. I want I want a big aviary where they can free, free roam a lot more, and we'll work on that. I'll see if I can get them to come out, and I'll show you what I meant by the the overbreeding thing. This is just a normal heat lamp. Let's see if I can grab a female here. I think I got her. Of course, they are very, very tame. No, that's my roux. No, that is the female. That's the female. If you look in the back of her head here, you'll see she's missing a lot of feathers. I have another one there. That's another thing. Uh, I, the type I have is I have a, one golden hen, one golden roux. And I got three... Coturnix hen and one Coturnix rue. This is golden there has been a little bit overbred. So I'm going to take one of the roosters out to give her a break. And give the other one a break. She's in there some, somewhere. And funny thing is, is my Coturnix rue is the bigger one. But yet my golden one, the small rue, he's the more dominant one. He's re very, very active. So we're going to have to, to fix that. And then, like I said, I have this all closed in. I give them shavings all the time in the winter time. It also helps keep them warm. And what I have under the shaving there is just cardboard. So what I do is once I come in, I just roll up the cardboard and I bring it back there. I got a wheelbarrow for now because I haven't had time to make myself a place to put all this compost in. And I just dump it in the wheelbarrow and then I have a fire pit which I burn the cardboard in. I think today what we're going to do is, for me and Anthony, we're going to clean the bottom cage here. I'm going to make a, a shelter in the corner for, for the roo, and I'm going to take one of them out at least. I'm hoping that he'll manage okay. We'll keep my eye on him, and then we'll go from there. <coughs> I feed them. What we feed these birds is turkey starter. It's 26% uh, protein. I'm not sure on the calcium. I don't remember. So... I am been giving them oyster shells, not all the time. So what I do in this dish, for example, is I'll put two scoops of uh, turkey feed, one scoop of uh, chicken scratch, or that's another thing I give them, and then half a scoop of uh, oyster shells, and I just mix it all up. They have their dust bath, they love it. I change it every day or so, two days or so, depending how much they, they poop in there. These little birds, it's 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 very <laughs> impressing. They can poop a lot, so that that's why we have to clean them a lot. It's not very big. This is something we had to do at the last minute to improvise, but we are pl planning on uh, changing it in in, in uh, the winter, in the summer, I should say, in the spring, and making a bigger one. We're gonna have to because we're going to if we're gonna hatch all those birds. We're gonna have to have a lot more room. The, if we're, of course, for now, they're going to be, once they hatch, we're going to put them in the brooder box. We'll show you where we have to build a new one. We'll show you the pro process of, of doing that. And then we're going to put them in the house until they grow a little bit bigger. And then we'll go from there. I'm weary. I'm not sure 
how I'm going to transfer them outside. I might keep them till the spring before I put them outside. I don't want to lose any birds in the, the cold weather. I'm going to put this girl back in here. Like I said, she's been overbred, and I, right there she's hiding. As you can see, she's got a little hiding spot in there. She's the other one that's been overbred too, so that's why I want to take the, one of the roosters out and to see if that will correct the situation a little bit, and we'll go from there. See, what I do is the reason I have this like this, it's a quick fix, but is uh, because it's my way to go in there and... Uh, get my eggs. See, I don't have any eggs right now. These girls have been seen to lay between 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock at night. I'll come back tonight here around 6. Usually I close them up for the night around 9 o'clock and I'll come and usually I'll have three, three to four eggs in the day. Like I said, one of them has been, I think, slowing down. I'm not sure which one. It could be that overbred one, which is being a little timid right now. And I've been getting three, three for sure. Unless I'm, I'm missing some in here, but I've been still getting eggs. They're still, they're still laying. We'll put this back in, and then I'm gonna go walk around. We're gonna show you what that nail that was there. What I feed them. Remember, he has a nail here. Yeah. No, it's just it goes, it goes like this. There we go. Okay. Come Molly, like I said, Molly really loves them. I have to watch them. I had eight to begin with, and this girl got a hold of two, and they are no longer. I'm gonna get Anthony to give you a quick glance around the yard just to show you what we have. <coughs> like I said, it's not it's not very big, but we're gonna try and manage the space as much as we can and do what we can. Right now, I have one planter box that we had done last year. I have a bunch of pots here. I do a lot of container container growing. We'll show you that in the spring. Potatoes are great in containers. They really produce good. We'll show, we'll show you that in the spring. I also have a front yard I, I can use, but you gotta be careful what I put out there because there is lots of deer in this area. We wanna grow lots of potatoes, lots of corn, lots, lots of onions. We wanna grow a lot of stuff. I wanna start putting in some, some fruit bushes and some fruits. We have strawberries. We put in strawberries last year. We had some tiny ones. I guess it was for the first year. We'll see how they do this year. Wanna show them the food? And then uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, we're gonna show you the food. We're gonna walk over here to the shed and show you what what you what, 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 what. <coughs> Doors busted. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see in there. I'll take. I'll take it. I have my phone light. All right. I have my light. Let's see if we can see. There's not very much light in here. This is the bedding we use. It's the cedar shavings. As you can see, we buy this from a feed local feed store. It's about five dollars a. a, a a bale, which is which is not much. Right now, I'm not going through a lot of feed. I bought this feed when we first got them. It was a 50-pound bag of turkey starter, 50-pound bag of scratch, and some oyster shell. And I still, this is still half full. I'll take a scoop out just to show you. This is my turkey food starter. This is what I, mostly what they eat. Uh, like I said, it's 20, 26 percent protein. They need they need a lot of protein. And then we have the oyster shells in here, which I tend not to give too too much, but they do need calcium. And I don't remember how much calcium there was in the feed. And then I'll show you the chicken scratch. I keep these in these containers so the rodents don't get in. And that's the scratcher right now. There's corn in there. There's different kind of grains in there. They like it. Yeah, they did this. And they, they really, I, I'll go in there and throw a couple of handfuls over the shavings. They like to go around. They're like chickens. They like to go, go around and scratch and, and eat. Yeah, I'll give them. A, also, we give them cucumbers. We give them, you know, a lot of different stuff. They really love cucumbers. This old dog cage we got. 
that's what I use when I clean up the cages. So I'll bring this top crate up and I'll take them out and put them in there while I clean the cages. And uh, funny enough, usually the, they say if you disturb them, they'll they'll uh, stop playing. And these birds are great. Uh, we first got them the first day we, we got them, we put them in the coop. They laid a couple of eggs. Then it took about a week for them to start start again. And ever since they started, they, they, they never stopped. They're, that's why I want to get some of the eggs hatched and ink so I can keep this bloodline going. This, this is very great. Like I said, this roux, the golden one, is a great roux. He's very active. The other one is not as much, but he's still, still. like I said, I we'll see once the hatch rate, what we get. But I do have to separate one rooster out of there. There's too, too, too many roosters that... I want to give these hands hands a break, and then the, for that's it, I guess for now. And for any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. We'll update again once we get the, we do the candling of the eggs. Once we build the the brooder box, and once they start hatching, we'll make another video. Thank you for now. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to press the subscribe button.